What is going on with the stock market? It seems to hit record highs every other day. On the one hand, the bulls would say that makes perfect sense. Have you seen US GDP? Have you seen the payroll report, the unemployment rate? As we know, or at least what we're told, the stock market is a discount of economic fundamentals and economic conditions. But then you look at a chart of other US stock market indexes, like the Russell 2000, for example, even the S&P 400 mid caps, and they look nothing like the S&P 500. So already a divergence there. But then you take a look at, say, NVIDIA. NVIDIA's stock looks more like a 1999.com tech than it does anything fundamental. And the rest of the Magnificent Seven look more like NVIDIA leading the shares higher and higher and higher. In fact, Deutsche Bank analysts just yesterday wrote, the Mag 7's rise has left the S&P 500 at around its most concentrated in at least the last 100 years. Perhaps not since the bubble of 1929 have so few stocks had such high weightings to the overall market. And the bulls would say that's just a good thing. We have this new emerging technology that they're going to take advantage of and lead not just the stock market, but also the real economy into this robust, fruitful, take advantage of the best innovation type of future. And we all want to believe that. In fact, that's what investors are taught to believe. We want to believe that stock prices are high because the economy is going to be great. And we believe the economy is going to be great because stock prices are high. That's kind of circular reasoning. So how do we make sense of what's going on really with the stock market? Is there any fundamental, fundamental arrangement or solid relationship with the reality that we can say, yeah, definitively, this is the case? And the answer is there is one very clear example of where shares and fundamentals are pretty darn clear. And that's Germany. Germans, Germany's DAX index or stock market index, that too has been hitting record highs pretty solidly and consistently over the last several months. And when it started to get to all time highs in December, this is what CNN wrote about summing it up. Germany's stock index opened at an all-time high Wednesday, again, this is December, as investors growing confidence that interest rates will soon be cut outweighs worries the country may be suffering a recession. In fact, the country, not it's not a question they may be suffering a recession, it has been a prolonged contraction going all the way back to the fall of 2022. Yet somehow, the DAX index, German shares have been rising to record highs as the economic situation in Germany gets worse and worse and worse. And what CNN actually wrote there might be applicable to more than just German stocks. Maybe the rise in shares, especially about the broader index or what's, what, maybe, what maybe we can see about the broader index is more about perceptions of liquidity and rate cuts than anything having to do with reality and fundamentals. Ever since December, the DAX index continues to make new record highs. In fact, it was at a record high just a couple days ago. And the most, the best case that you could make about it, given the, the, the increasingly negative fundamentals, as we'll see in just a moment, in the German economy and Europe as a whole, too, is that maybe the market is saying the worst is behind them. That whatever has been happening in Germany it's going to get better from here. So the stock market is simply like NVIDIA leading toward a better future. Speaking of those fundamentals, we have fundamentals to talk about in the United States, which actually it does impact the rest of the world. Talking about commercial real estate next Monday, February 19th, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. I'm holding a webinar. We're gonna talk about commercial real estate. What's actually the problem in commercial real estate? We're gonna talk about how big the commercial real estate problem might be and whether or not there's some good news in that respect. And we're also gonna look for what are the risks with commercial real estate, not just in the banking sector, but also in terms of global liquidity, maybe some impacts there. And because Monday's coming up quickly, we're actually running out of space. So if you are interested in attending, I highly recommend that you, you to sign up at the link in the description below. And we're going to talk about stuff that we just can't get into here on YouTube. So I really hope to see you there. And don't forget, there's also a live Q&A that we'll do afterwards. 
I think a great place to start assessing the situation with the German stock market is essentially you've got record highs for the DAX on the one side, and on the other, you've got economic uh, statistics that continue to look worse, not better. So if you're thinking, okay, German stocks are divorced from current fundamentals because they're going to be pricing future fundamentals, that just doesn't seem to be the case either. And again, Germany might be the best example, not might be, it is the best example of this clear divergence between share prices and the actual economic situation, now and as well as in the near-term future. German industrial production, once the engine of the European economy, over the last several years, German industry is a complete and utter mess, and it's not getting any better. In fact, according to the latest statistics up through the month of December 2023, German industrial production has plummeted by more than 5% over the last seven months of last year, and down almost 2% in December alone, not getting in better, in fact, accelerating to the downside. Down 5.3%, that's a huge decline in just a seven-month period. And it brought the index down to its lowest level since 2010. I'm not talking about rate of contraction. I'm talking about actual level of industrial output across all of German industry at levels we haven't seen in 14 years. And that was back when the German economy was struggling to get out of the lows from the Great Recession, so-called Great Recession. How can German industry be falling at, to these low levels when the big companies in Germany are pricing at record highs, at least collectively? And it, it just goes on from there. We already know that German GDP accelerated to the downside in the fourth quarter. The country avoided the technical recession of two straight quarters of negative GDP because they revised the third quarter to basically zero. But again, it doesn't matter. Like Europe as a whole, over the last five quarters, German GDP is actually slightly lower. And it wouldn't matter if it was slightly higher. Five quarters, a year and three months without any economic growth and output is a substantial contraction. It's more about the length of time than it is the, the, the level of negative in GDP. So we know fundamentally that Germany is in a really bad shape and it does not appear to be getting any better. So defying that explanation. And we continue to go right down the list. Retail sales. German retail sales were atrocious in November and December both in nominal terms as well as in real terms. They declined in nominal terms pretty sharply, so of course they declined in real terms pretty sharply too. And German retail sales have been weak in nominal terms for the last seven months of last year, and in real terms for over a year. Germany is buying less stuff, and now Germans at least aren't paying as much for it, but that also means that German companies are booking less revenue even as they sell fewer and fewer items. And we keep on going. The closely watched ZEW survey, which just came out yesterday. Sentiment in the ZEW survey has rebounded somewhat for basically what seem to be the same reasons as the stock market. Sentiment is rising as it looks like interest rates will stop rising and maybe start to fall. In addition, Germany's also feeling the positive effects, at least in terms of confidence, from more and more and more solid disinflation. However, even though sentiment has risen, it hasn't risen as far as it did earlier in last year when the disinflation rebound really got going. So sentiment hasn't even gotten back to where it was last year when the rise in sentiment last year didn't actually improve the situation. Just in terms of Germany's ZEW, we don't see sentiment up in the 50s and 60s and maybe even the 70s that would be consistent with all-time highs, or at least what we perceive of all-time highs in the stock market. Sentiment is only less pessimism right now than it is of anything of optimism. But just look at what the ZEW survey says for the assessment of the current situation. For all this talk of maybe Germany is bottoming out and turned a corner, the assessment of the, the, the current situation from the ZEW says that's just not happening either. We keep looking forward to more positive sentiment and the assessment of the current situation keeps getting worse and worse and worse. In fact, in the month of uh, February, the latest number was almost minus 82, which is one of the worst in this. I mean, it's, it's solidly recessionary. And it, again, it hasn't changed all throughout the last year up until now, February of 2024. 
So according to these assessments from commercial agents across Germany, they look a lot like the current statistics, hard data from the German government too, whether it's GDP, retail sales, or industrial production. So again, we have to ask the question, how in the world can Germany's stock market be hitting record high after record high after record high, given the fact the economy is already in substantial trouble and does not appear to be getting better anytime soon? Well, what is the DAC index? As of September 2021, the DAX index was enlarged to 40 biggest stocks in Germany on the Frankfurt Exchange. It used to be 30, and those 40 shares represent about 80% of the total market cap. And here's what Investopedia says about the DAX exchange, and I think this is a pretty good summation. The DAX is a prominent benchmark for German and European stocks, listing major companies by liquidity and market capitalization and an indicator of trends in Germany's economy. But that's pretty conclusive. That last part cannot be the case. It cannot be an indicator of trends in Germany's economy. Because think about this. Germany's stock market, the DAX index, has been rising since late 2022. In tandem with U.S. stocks and the S&P 500, the DAX has been rising all the while the German economy, the European economy as a whole, has been getting worse and worse and worse. So all of the potential excuses that the German stock market is just looking ahead have not held throughout this entire bull market run in German shares. German shares continue to go up. The German and European economy continues to go down with no end in sight for either one of those. Share prices keep rising. The economy keeps getting worse. There cannot be any real relationship between the economic macro fundamentals, in Germany at least, and those priced in the DAX index. The answer here comes to us just what CNN wrote that I mentioned up toward the beginning of this video. They said that happiness over rate cuts outweighs the prospects of a deepening recession. Well, they didn't say deepening recession. They said prospects of recession. But we all know that it's a deepening recession. It is essentially what John Maynard Keynes wrote way back when, that people are buying shares because they think other people are going to be buying shares. They believe that there's this liquidity relationship, especially with interest rates going lower, that has to be somehow share price positive. The old punch bowl explanation. Here's what Keynes said. The professional investor is forced to concern himself with the anticipation of impending changes in the news or in the atmosphere of the kind by which experience shows that the mass psychology of the market is most influenced. This is the inevitable result of investment markets organized with a view to so-called liquidity. So everyone has been buying stocks because they believe everyone else will be buying stocks because everyone else believes everyone other than them believes in this liquidity story. And so it's not an accident that the stock market started to rise way back in October of, of 2022, September and October 2022, because that's when the interest rate environment actually changed. I'm not talking about central bank interest rates, but market interest rates. That's when the market started to reject the rate hikes from central bankers, curves started to invert, and the prospects for lower rates in the future rather than higher forever started to really be taken seriously. So if you believe that everyone else believes, that everyone believes that interest rates, lower interest rates are somehow a look, an increase in liquidity and that somehow liquidity is share price positive, then you're going to equate all of these things together regardless of what happens in the actual real economy. It's all about that narrative. And we see that narrative priced most clearly in Germany. Now, one argument that you could make is that German stocks are no longer just about the German economy or even Europe. These are large cap multinational companies. Therefore, their prospects aren't necessarily tied to the local atmosphere. Instead, maybe they're, they're reflecting a more positive and robust global economic case. But if that was actually true, then wouldn't we see corroboration in things other than, say, just the S&P 500 or Dow Jones Industrial in the United States? Wouldn't we see things like industrial commodities truly booming? If the global economy was set to hit its soft landing Goldilocks scenario, 
Dr. Copper would be telling us this. Instead, copper prices just recently hit multi-month lows on increasing concerns over the shape of the global economy. Just recently, Bloomberg NEF had this to say, the primary supply of copper is set to fall short of demand between 2023 and 2027, with secondary production increasingly supporting supply with as much as 5.4 million, 5 million metric tons by 2027. In 2024, the primary supply deficit is projected to be 3.6 million tons, which is less than the 10-year average. But based on these factors, copper prices are more likely to respond to economic sentiment than the long-term supply and demand imbalance. And if that's true, given the fact that copper is in a persistent and increasing supply deficit, which should be price positive, we see copper prices struggle despite everything that's going on in China with the government trying to stimulate the economy. What does that actually tell you about global economic prospects? They sure don't look like the German DAX or the S&P 500 either. And we could continue to go through the list of commodities, which should be pricing a global economic renaissance, if that was indeed the case. We should be seeing crude oil trade on more than just the geopolitics of the Red Sea, or more than just the supply cuts that OPEC has to continue to extend further and further into the future because demand is not living up to its end. Or other uh, commodities, such as aluminum. ING just wrote about aluminum recently, and they said the LME aluminum price is down about 7% this year. This is last year, as China has been slow to recover from the COVID-19 lockdowns, while economic growth in Europe and the U.S. has remained sluggish. While Chinese aluminum has been stronger than expected, mainly due to increased appetite for the green sector in the country, demand for the more traditional sectors like building and construction has mostly disappointed. So on and on we go. Markets that should be booming, that should be pricing a boom, are not. The only ones that are, are these highly concentrated, big cap, mega cap, global stock indexes. And in the German DAX case, we can see very clearly it has absolutely nothing to do with economic fundamentals, either in Germany, across Europe, or the rest of the world. So if the DAX is all just fantasy about rate cuts and people's perceptions of other people's perceptions of other people's perceptions, what might that suggest about the S&P 500? Again, as I mentioned, the S&P 500, even that is concentrated, the Magnificent Seven. The Russell 2000 looks nothing like it. Even recently, the Russell 2000 is at best sideways, not hitting record highs or anywhere close to record highs. So what are U.S. stocks actually telling us? They're telling us that people believe in the rate cut story. People believe that rate cuts are somehow liquidity and somehow that liquidity makes its way into the stock market. And if enough people believe that other people believe it, it's share price positive. As I've been saying all along, once rate cuts were put on the table, you should definitely expect the stock market to surge, which it has. But that doesn't mean it's telling us everything is fine or that the economic situation is getting better it just tells us something about how people perceive rate cuts. Sign up for our webinar next Monday. Space is running out, link in the description. Also, if you wanna see more about what the stock market actually is and what it's telling us, I did a video about that just a couple months ago. That's linked below me. As always, I thank you very much for joining me. Huge thank you, Eurodollar University members and subscribers. Until next time, take care.